I'm Roland Smart. Welcome back to DrupalCon 2019. I'm sitting with Rain Michaels, who is from an agency called Stoffer, a Pantheon customer, and somebody who comes from the development background but is now a user experience designer. Mm -hmm. Welcome. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. It's nice to be here. So, at the end of the day, mm -hmm. one of the things that you know we I struggle to do as a marketer at Pantheon okay. is to get folks to understand that the tools that we give developers mm -hmm. have an impact mm -hmm. where the site meets the user. And okay. that's really where you're focused. Mm -hmm. So I'm interested in hearing a little bit about, first off, how did the work that you do at Stoffer, how you came to user experience design, how you made that journey as a developer. Okay. And then I'm a little, let's talk about how some of the tools actually change the way that we can deliver great user experience. Okay. So, yeah, start. How did you go from being a developer? So I came from being a developer because early on, very early on, it became evident that I'm good at business analysis. Okay. I'm good at just kind of listening to clients and becoming a bit of a client advocate, um, at sort of eliciting where we're misunderstanding the problems that the client might be asking for. Okay. And since I was good at business analysis, that sort of floated me from development into project management. Uh, which sort of skirted the realm of user experience design. Sure. And then as a result, eventually I figured out that I absolutely love user experience design. I love finding out what people really need yep. and really kind of exploring the guts of a problem and testing, iterating, researching, interviewing. Yep. And so eventually I just made it clear that this is what this is I'm you going to, to be focus. doing. And so. I would imagine that as somebody who comes from a development background, you would be able to kind of see the opportunity space mm -hmm. associated with UX maybe in a different way. Than I, yes, I do think I have a fairly unique perspective on user experience. I also happen to come from an anthropology background. Okay, all right. I studied a lot Love of storytelling. It. So um, so anthropology and storytelling are a very natural flow into user experience design. Yep. Since it's all about empathy and ethnography. And, um, but the development part of my background, it gives me, it, it's simultaneously a real benefit and then also a little bit of a hindrance because okay. I have a very comprehensive understanding of what's possible. Yep. So I can kind of explore, or come up with solutions, or I can communicate with engineers in a way that usually user experience designers aren't really able to As do. As good at doing, sure. Um, but then I also have to remind myself to let go of the limitations because while I know what's possible, I also know what some of the technical limitations sure. are. Um, and that's really one of the ways in which the Pantheon workflow actually uh, benefits the, the story and at okay. least benefits my work. Yeah, say more about uh, that. Because with the kind of dev to stage, that sort of easy workflow of having a bunch of different workspaces, yep. um, being able to kind of experiment with a site or being able to kind of upstream your work as you go, it gives you the ability to kind of play with features. If you want to try something that's a little bit harder, a little bit riskier, you can do so in a yep. safe space yep. and then roll back really quickly or send it upstream. And you don't necessarily have to feel as concerned that you might accidentally break something along the way. Yep. I think one of the themes that keeps coming up at, mm -hmm. uh, at DrupalCon this year, at least for me in the sessions that I've been part of, is this idea that, you know, the fact is we don't know what's going to work. Yeah. And um, especially when it comes to user experience design, when we do research, oftentimes mm -hmm. users say that they want things right. that like, you actually have to read between the lines of mm -hmm. what they're saying to understand what they want, or sometimes they think that they, they say that they want one thing, but actually they want something else. Right. And agile, being able to operate in an agile fashion basically means like, let's do lots of small changes, mm -hmm. let's try lots of small different things, right. and instead of assuming that we think Assuming that we know what the answer is going to be, or that the idea that we're excited about is going to be the thing that actually works best for them, mm -hmm. we get to actually put something in front of them and get some data right. on it. Right. Um, so I'm curious, how, how has how have you integrated agile practice and iteration into your work in the UX domain? Okay. Well, that's a that's a good question. <laughs> um, not I I don't 
think that every project from a UX standpoint is is really kind of purely agile or purely sure. not agile. Okay. Um, it's all kind of a matter of iterating and cycling through ideas, which maybe in a way that is purely agile, but it's about kind of exploring, even, even if you have to come up with sort of a, a full feature set or a comprehensive design along the way, uh, being able to kind of express your ideas in some kind of a visual form that can be communicated to people early on, simple little bits and pieces, just taking out sections of a user mm -hmm. flow and being able to put that in front of somebody and then have them kind of work through that process and see if it's working or not. And then being able to come back very quickly because you haven't invested large amounts of time into making it stunningly beautiful mm -hmm. or putting it into a live environment or even building it from scratch. Yeah. Um, that's sort of that process of kind of ideate, experiment, repeat, ideate, mm -hmm. experiment, repeat. And then finally, once you feel like you have something worth yeah. continuing with, then you can kind of put it out to the next step, which would be putting it in front of clients. And then you experiment again once it's in front of clients yeah. and then you repeat. Or you put it again into kind of a safe space using the various spaces that you have within your Pantheon setup. Yeah. And then you can experiment in there, um, maybe send it out to a small kind of test user group, yep. make sure it's okay. Then if maybe you're sort of stealing code from somewhere else or you're borrowing a third party in that test, you can say, okay, well, this user group seemed to really appreciate it, so we can put the money in to actually purchase whatever it is that we need or actually build whatever it is that we need in order to sure. move it to production. I'm curious, another topic that has come up is that you know the consumer expectations expectations are changing quickly, as mm -hmm. is the technology yeah. that we use to deliver. Yeah. I mean, obviously, the community is here to talk about uh, to talk about how Drupal as a platform mm -hmm. is evolving right. um, and innovating. There's lots of interesting things that are happening in, in Drupal. How do you see that playing out in the context of like new kinds of experiences that mm -hmm. we can deliver? Is there is there something that you've seen from a UX perspective that you're excited about sort of trying and testing in the context of uh, one of your client engagements? Oh, uh, I'm not sure if I'm answering this question correctly, but I recently had the um, kind of exciting opportunity to do accessibility reviews for the Media Initiative and the Layout Builder Initiative. Okay. And because cool. I got to take a look at that as it was being developed and do that sort of accessibility review and give that feedback and to have the opportunity to you know play with those tools using a screen reader and using mm -hmm. other assistive devices. Um, it was really enjoyable to interact with those in a way that historically, uh, you know, I've, I've used media module for clients before in Drupal 7 and even early iterations of Drupal 8, and it uh, it's always seems like it's going to be this wonderful solution, and yet the, there are these usability challenges that end up being a reality for, our, for the clients because they don't think like developers do. Yeah. And uh, so for me, it's been really exciting to see the changes that are being made and to actually now have the opportunity to be part of providing feedback and even guidance on yeah. those changes. And uh, I'm well, not sure that that's exactly what you were asking. Well, it would be pretty gratifying to, to see those things come to fruition, actually, in, <laughs> yeah. the, in the product. Well, I'd, and it was a lot of fun in the Dries note today to actually see him presenting some of the stuff that I had yeah. been able to review and give feedback on. So that was pretty neat. Uh, yeah. That was very special. That's cool. Um, that's great. I think uh, the, the other interpretation of the question <laughs> that um, I was asking is, is, is about um, just web experience is mm -hmm. constantly changing. Yes. And yeah. evolving. Yeah. And as a consumer, I see experiences that once in a while that are like fresh. Like, whoa, I haven't seen that right. before. Like, this is right. a different um, right. UX paradigm. Mm -hmm. And it's real fresh and kind of just gets me to think differently and gets mm -hmm. my attention. And I'm curious if you, if you, are you watching for those things? Are there any things like that that are on your, your radar? That's an interesting question to ask because, of course, as soon as you ask it, it's hard for those things to come to mind. But I yeah. am watching for those things. I have a yeah. bucket, um, sort of a, 
a bookmark bucket where sure. anytime I see something that I think is really interesting, I'll just sort of pop it in there and write a little note to myself of why cool. I'm interested in it. And, uh, and it's there as sort of a source of inspiration. I think one of the challenges is that uh, oftentimes when we are working with Drupal sites, um, we think about the sort of constraints of Drupal. Yep. And so we might resist the urge to play with some of these more innovative ideas. Uh, you know, single page apps have, have mm -hmm. been an example of that for a couple of years where if you need a very deep Drupal site, it can be hard to do a single page app experience in a deep Drupal site. So how do you kind of balance that? really yep. neat experience with with what Drupal does. Um, and I would actually say in a way for, for Drupal, I used to joke even as far back as Drupal 6 that if you can imagine it with Drupal, you can build it. So the real limitation isn't so much Drupal is limited because it's not. It's such a kind of space where you can customize and create and really innovate if you have the time and resources to do so. Yeah. So I would like to see us as a community find a way to allow those, those sort of community resources, our engagement, to experiment and play yep. even more than we do and see how we can kind of push those boundaries that we totally. see. You know, the, the, um, it's a common sort of, I think, paradigm that uh, Drupal agencies will get into where they know how Drupal works and they know how they can build something quickly and they know how they can keep it inexpensive for their users. And um, to just be careful. All of those things are important. We have to do that for, for our clients. We have to do that for the projects. But um, to, to be able to allow ourselves to occasionally just test those boundaries and try something new and play with some of the new ideas yep. that are out there a little bit more. All right. Well, let's make that happen in 2019. All right. Thanks for good. coming to chat with me. All right. Thank you. Yep.